So AMD's third generation Ryzen CPUs were launched a little while ago. To be more precise, it was launched on the exact same day as the RX 5700 series GPUs. And as most of you have probably heard or seen, those graphics cards perform spectacularly. Now, if you caught our latest Ryzen build video, which you can check out right over here, you'd know that we didn't publish our Ryzen 3000 series review. And that's simply because our X570 motherboards were showing some odd behaviors. As many of you may or may not have heard, it's been discovered that AMD actually sampled a lot of the reviewers with motherboards that had buggy BIOSes. And this specifically had to do with AGISA, otherwise known as AMD Generic Encapsulated Software Architecture. Yes, that really is a thing. Uh, it's basically, it had an issue where it wouldn't allow the chips to boost properly. Well, it turns out that those issues are also being encountered by some of you guys who are running Zen 2 CPUs, which is unfortunate. Uh, so in this video, I'm gonna be showing how to check to see if your Ryzen 3000 series processor is boosting properly with a few simple tools. Uh, so that way you can at least be sure that every last megahertz that you paid for is actually there. So why don't we get into it? But uh, first, I also wanna mention that timestamps uh, throughout this video will be linked in the description down below. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. Let me ask you, what is more satisfying than a good peel? Ooh, that hits the spot, but you gotta love easy to sync ARGB components for a beautiful light show. Thermal takes extensive support with five volt ARGB motherboard sync, gives you lighting control of fans, memory lighting kits, all in one coolers, power supplies, and more by using the five volt header on your motherboard. You can also daisy chain a bunch of products to light from a single five volt header or with their own controller for individual customization. But now with ARGB sync, it's all made incredibly easy to match. Check it out below. Okay, so let me go over what exactly is happening with these new processors since launch. Basically, many of them weren't hitting their specified boost frequencies, and sometimes they were missing it by a big amount too. Let's take the 3700X as the first example. It has a max boost clock of 4.4 gigahertz, but in our case, in single threaded stress tests, our 3700X would only boost to 4.375 gigahertz. Meanwhile, the 3900X, we all love so much, is supposed to max out at 4.6 gigahertz, but ours would only top out at a sad 4.5 gigahertz. Now, neither of these lower frequencies would cause performance issues, but neither of these chips were performing at its fullest capabilities. Some people were actually reporting lower clock speeds than the ones that I just showed. Anyways, we figured this out pretty early onto our testing process, but without a new functional BIOS available at the time, there wasn't much that we could do. Well, even as you're watching this, brand new BIOSes are being rolled out with the new Agisa 1.0.0.3 AB, which uh, is supposed to fix these core boosting issues. Now, in the last few days, we've looked at four motherboards, including the X570 Tai Chi, the Aorus X570 Master, the Aorus X570i Pro Wi-Fi, and the MSI X570 Meg Ace, and with the latest BIOSes, they all work well. But while our problems have gone away, we've also heard from quite a few actual consumers using both brand new X570 boards and older X470, X370, B450, B352. Supposedly, their chips still aren't boosting properly with the latest BIOS fixes. So let's get into how you can test your system to ensure that the CPU is running at its proper clock speed. Now, in order to do this, we would require a few programs, including Cinebench R20, HW Info, and CPU-Z. Uh, actually, I'll leave the latest versions uh, in the description down below for your convenience. I'd still recommend downloading them just to make sure that you have uh, the latest versions of all of these three programs. Now to start off, we're gonna make sure that Windows is running the proper power settings. We are gonna type in power settings into the search bar, then head over to additional power settings and then select the AMD Ryzen high performance power plan. This just makes sure that there are no aggressive power saving settings that could interfere with the processor's ability to boost. By the way, please make sure that you're running Windows May Update Build 1903 and the very latest chips and drivers off of AMD's website. Next up, open Cinebench R20 and HW Info 64. Select the sensors only box when opening HW Info and then you can resize Cinebench and then have them side by side. Then what you wanna do is head over to HW Info and go under the frequency section, which is under the CPU subheader. So in my case, I'm using the 3900X and you want to keep an eye on the CPU core ratios or frequencies. Now, if you're wondering, HW Info gets this information directly from the CPU. In Cinebench R20, run the single core test. Uh, now, this one takes quite a while, which gives you plenty of time to keep an eye on the CPU core ratios. Uh, and if your Ryzen chip is behaving properly, you should start seeing at least one core running at 4400 megahertz for the 3700X or 4600 megahertz 
for the 3900X or any of these other speeds for the rest of AMD's lineup. The highest frequency will probably keep switching from core to core since the intelligence sensors in the processor are actually trying to make sure the heat loads are balanced. And if you haven't seen any of those cores, hit those speeds in the current column. Uh, check out the maximum column to see if it maybe happened too quickly and you missed it. If you still don't see those proper core ratios, then there is a problem. Now, assuming that their CPU temperatures are not you know, around the 90 degrees Celsius mark, uh, that just clearly means that uh, your CPU is just not boosting properly. So what can you do to fix this? Well, if you're already using the latest BIOS, you can try clearing the CMOS or just loading the optimized defaults within the BIOS. If none of that works, you're just gonna have to wait until the motherboard manufacturer releases a BIOS that fixes the problem. But guys, unless you're overclocking, you don't wanna mess around with any frequency, multiplier, voltage, and power settings within the BIOS, because if you fiddle around with those settings, it could stop the processor from boosting properly. Now, while making sure that your CPU cores are boosting properly, uh, there are other three frequencies that you'll wanna keep an eye on for optimal performance. Now, to do this, you're gonna need to have the Ryzen Master software and CPU Z memory tab open side by side. So this is the memory clock frequency, this is the infinity fabric frequency, and this over here on CPU Z is the memory controller frequency. Now, most people have made the mistake thinking that this number was actually the infinity fabric, but by default, the memory clock, the infinity fabric clock, and the memory controller clock are all fixed in a one to one to one ratio from DDR4-2133 all the way up to DDR4-3600. Past DDR4-3600, all of those three frequencies are not synchronized and that, my friends, that can cause some serious performance penalties. And this is something that I'm gonna plan on discussing in the overclocking video. So definitely stay tuned for that. Now, if you set your memory to DDR4-3600, the memory clock should be 1800 megahertz, which is half the double data rate. And the Infinity Fabric should be 1800 megahertz. And so is the memory controller as well. Another example is if you have your memory set to DDR4-3200. Here, the memory clock should be 1600 megahertz. The Infinity Fabric should be 1600 megahertz. And the memory controller should also be set at 1600 megahertz. Now, if any of those numbers don't match, and if you haven't changed anything in the BIOS except for the memory speed, timings, and voltage, then your motherboard isn't behaving properly, uh, and it's certainly not giving you the best possible performance. Unlike the CPU boost frequencies, this one can be fixed. Both the Infinity Fabric and memory controller frequencies can be manually adjustable in the BIOS, uh, but just a reminder, guys, <laughs> that if you're not comfortable doing that, expect to wait for a new BIOS to fix the problem. Now there is another problem that we found and that's the ability for these processors to downclock and idle properly. Now, if you don't mind losing a little bit of performance in exchange for you know, lower power consumption, uh, you can actually change the Windows power plan from Ryzen high performance to Ryzen balanced, since this will allow the processor to downclock and run at much lower voltages. At least in theory it should. But like these other issues, a lot of people have actually been reporting that their processors are keeping unusually high core voltages and they never actually go down when their processor is just idling. Well, it seems like monitoring tools like HW Info 64 and Ryzen Master or background apps like Corsair IQ, NZXT Cam, <laughs> Razer Synapse, and maybe even other random apps like Steam Discord and OBS are fooling the Ryzen 3000 series CPUs. You see, the CPU thinks that there is a system load, so it's staying in a continuous high boost and core voltage state when those applications are open even though that the programs aren't really doing anything. So right now, running the latest version of CPU-Z with no other monitoring apps open or in the background seems to be the best way to see if your processor is idling properly. If you see the core voltage ever dip to sub one volt, then everything is working correctly and idle is working. Now, what if you're using the right Windows power plan and you only have CPU-Z open and you're still not seeing those sub one volt core voltages? Well, let's assume that you're running the latest Windows update as well as you pulled, you're pulled. you running the latest AMD chips and drivers as well. There's one possible fix. What you can try is going into the BIOS and changing the CPU voltage from auto to normal. And this seems to resolve the issue for a lot of people. If that doesn't work for you, well, I'm probably gonna repeat the same statement that I probably did like five times in this video. You just kind of have to wait for your motherboard manufacturer to roll out an updated BIOS so that it can address all of these issues. So there you guys have it. And I do wanna mention something. A lot of these issues can be fixed with a BIOS update and some of them seem to have been taken care of already. So that's nice. Uh, I just hope that this quick video helped uh, in case if you're rocking a Ryzen 3000 series processor. Uh, definitely stay tuned for our overclocking video. If you have any questions in terms of overclocking, 
uh, let us know in the comments down below. I'll definitely take a look and make sure that we'll cover that in that video. So that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out some relevant content over here. Subscribe for some cool content. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.